She, she was, was gaslighting everyone into she, treating she her with uh, special treatment. Literally. She was. She she is the catalyst of all this, of using COVID to make that exclusive, and then turning herself into the victim and saying that it's our fault. We've been living our own lives and protested for the sake of your marriage and mom's marriage. We protested. Once those were down the drain, we were just like, cool. She no longer could feel the victim because she could no longer feel us attacking her because we just gave up. We didn't care about her anymore. All of you are just kind of jerks. I don't want to be around you. Well, well, well. We know. We now know exactly what happened during the text exchange with Robin and the other kids. And we're going to get into all, all of it, you guys. It's Mary. And I'm Be ready for to like. Subscribe. And comment down below, y'all. Because when basically said that what happened was there was a whole text message exchange or whatever. Robin got in there, started gaslighting people, talking about how, oh, we need to do it on Zoom because Ariella is forgetting you guys. Mind you, she said forgetting. She didn't say forgotten. Okay? Yeah. It's an action word. Okay? That means mm. that it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't yeah. passed yet. So they, she still remembers them. Yes. Okay? And then she started, um, she was putting suggestions out there or whatever, and then she started talking about past trauma and all this stuff going on. And then she's like... Her kids are suffering from trauma or past trauma. So this was about a gift exchange. You decide to make it about yourself and, and your and BS you and I victim story. you supposed to even be in there. Because it was for the siblings. You know what, you know who I even think sent this message down when I'm thinking about it? Mike Kelty probably was the one who told... <laughs> Robin about it. Can't trust McKelty. Like we said, we have put the puzzle pieces together and we now see why McKelty is the way she is. And I mean, I can understand it, but then again, I'm just like, she's a she, child. She doesn't really she's know. like, you know, I'm telling you because I don't want Aurora and Brianna to get bombarded by the other siblings. So I think maybe you need to be there. And probably put her in. Very odd, McKelty. And Very. so that's why Robin gave her the job to go do and let her know tell your siblings I wouldn't be talking to them anymore. You could have done that anyway, but that's what happens when you assert yourself in things that don't... And to me, it seems like Robin, like McKelsey's yeah, more so right. on Robin's side. I think so. Yeah, I think she probably has a she vendetta. She is taking sides, for sure. Yeah, I think there's a vendetta against the family, unfortunately. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but that basically is what happened with the whole text exchange or whatever, and then she basically sent the message that, hey, I'm not going to talk to you guys or whatever. And Garrison basically has said that, look, I don't really care about what's going on. Like, I do want to have a relationship with my siblings, but if Robin's there, um, F her, I'm basically. Not I'm not, I don't have the emotional maturity to, to be, be like, dealing well, with this. this. <laughs> he's honest. All like he's daddy, but at least he's honest to say that. And he's, he's still relatively young, and so I think he's feeling his point. So, yeah, he can say that. Yeah. But Cody, by this time of your life, in your 50s, mid-50s, you should have the emotional maturity. Yeah. Yeah, I seem like Garrison is really, because he talked about it, but he said he's basically really done with Robin. He has, like, he's like, you can have her, like, you guys can have each other. I'm not dealing with this anymore. I like, know. it's exhausting. Like, we're we have tried. not in your lives anymore. So all that, your victim stuff, you pointing the finger at us, that we're bullying you, we're not there for you, we are giving you trauma. And also he said we don't care anymore, so yeah. it's like you can't hold that over our head. So he basically is accusing her of being a narcissist, really. Which, I mean, I feel like we all kind of feel collectively. Um, but I feel she like... Yeah, I mean, they are both, they are one in the same, honey. So I just feel like with Garrison, I'm happy he's speaking the truth, but I don't think all of his siblings are necessarily on board. Definitely not... Um, Christine and Gabriel and I know Garrison looks at Savannah for backup because he was like we don't need a dad and then Savannah's like oh I'm my food my <laughs> <laughs> she was focused on that food she and Janelle honey they were focused on their food you're like look my name Bennett I'm not in it I don't even know my mom leaving him yet like but one Gabe, thing at a time Gabriel, he seems still hurt by it he does I mean, when do you still, still hurts, yeah. hurts by the fault of not having a relationship yeah. with his dad? I mean, even Christine was like, you know what? I think every child needs a dad mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But my thing is, do you really need a dad if they're toxic and toxic in your life and they're not really like. Yeah. You know, I just, I don't know if that really is the case. I don't mm -hmm. feel like that works for everybody. No, I, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Some people have awesome dads and that's great and some people don't 
And that's, and that's fine okay too. too. Um, yeah. But yeah, you don't have to. Not all, not all children need their dads in their lives. Yeah, that's what I believe. So I just feel like at this point, I'm happy that Garrison has kind of come to peace with Especially the situation. Especially if, the, if the, it, not all children need a, a toxic father. Like, no child needs a toxic parent. Let me put it that way. Yeah. In their lives, period. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's going to do more damage than good, and it's going to affect your other relationships, especially if you continue to stay in that negative yeah. energy, and you have that and, person. And especially when you're still relatively young, when you're in your 20s, and your 30s, you know, you're just starting your own family and stuff. People don't need that. Now, when you get older, you get into your 50s, I think there's more space for forgiveness. There's more space for understanding, and and you'll get there, you know, but... Yeah, um, yeah, and I, and I think that's okay. Everybody yeah. has to decide what is good for them, what works for them, what they can take and what they cannot take. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like at this point, it is what it is. Robin, I feel like she should be ashamed of herself, but I feel like at this point, there is no shame um, and there is no guilt. There is nothing there except for a, the a story well, of a victim. Good. Yeah. And yeah. That's, and that's what it is. She's going to try and find a way to be a victim of this. My thing is, what was very sad was that they wanted to call the siblings for this gift exchange. Right. I don't know how Robin inserts herself in that and gets all and decides to be the mouthpiece for her children. Like, these kids can speak on their own. Yeah. They don't need you to to to, to speak um, on behalf of them. But I really believe that what Robin was trying to do, and with Michael's help, they were trying to get these kids to be on Zoom, the boys especially, the So guys. they can start some drama. So they can have Cody on the Zoom too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so then he can see all the children and then he can say, oh, we all met. I was with all the children, you know. Um, I reached out. <laughs> this is how it all worked out. I'm like, man, bye. And she was trying to give that avenue. And then when she realized that was not going to happen, yeah. Then she takes herself out and plays the victim of, I'm not. I'm just not going to talk to any of them ever again. And the fact that she feels comfortable, Mike Kelty, to come tell you that, that just to me shows how little she thinks of you. That's how I feel. Like, she's going to use you, Mike LT, and then when she doesn't need you anymore, like the same thing with Mary, she's going to shove you into the background. Yeah. I mean, she's not above using some children now. Not at all. But yeah, y'all, let so, us know what you guys yeah. think about this whole thing, y'all, but it is Mary. And at the end, it's the children who end up suffering. Yeah, for sure. You know, but Gwen raised a very good point. Um, the trauma that Robin is talking about, how are your kids traumatized? If Cody has been in your house all along, yeah, what trauma exactly are they suffering from? Because we haven't been in you all's lives for a while. Yeah. So what trauma has, has occurred? Only if you guys are telling them everything. Right. Right? If you guys are keeping that away from your children, like Cody, you keep on going around saying that Christine needs to stop spreading your name around in a bad way. Well, what, like... What trauma are the kids suffering from? If you guys are not going around telling them all the business yeah. about the different wives and all of that, if you guys were keeping it to yourself, they wouldn't know anything. They will be in this nice, happy bubble, ready to be there with their siblings. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, she, um, Gwen did raise a very important point. What trauma are you all suffering from? Because you guys have Cody, you know, 100% of the time. Yeah. But anyway. yes, y'all, it's Mary. And Amma. We would just like. Subscribe. And comment down below. Bye. Bye.